Why are you afraid? At first blush, the disciples might have thought Jesus was kidding, pulling a quick one, teasing them, kind of like one swimmer asking another, Why are you wet? The storm on the Sea of Galilee had turned their trip across the Sea of Galilee into a white-knuckled plunge. Here's how one of the disciples remembered the moment. Jesus got into a boat and his followers went with him and a great storm arose on the lake so that the waves covered the boat. This is a great word that Matthew uses here for storm. Seismos, S-E-I-S-M-O-S. Yes, seismos, like seismology or seismologist, the study of earthquakes. Matthew uses the same word when he talks about how the earth shook when, when Christ was crucified on the cross and how the earth shook when Jesus rose from the dead. The defeat of sin, the defeat of death, and now the defeat of fear. Apparently, Jesus takes our fears very seriously, although they might have thought that Jesus wasn't going to deal with anything because as they look across to him, Matthew writes, Jesus was sleeping. Now there's a scene. The disciples scream and Jesus dreams. The thunder roars and Jesus snores. Jesus is asleep, but then he lifts his head from his pillow and he steps out from the stern into the storm and he asks this question, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Is there any chance that Jesus might be asking you the same question? Why are you afraid? Fears serve a healthy purpose in life. Fear is the canary in the coal mine. It warns us of impending danger. It's not the presence of fear or the occasion of fear, but it's the pervasion of fear that gets us in trouble when we mismanage our fears when we try to manage our fears with vice-like control or, or angry outburst or sullen withdrawals, when we allow fear to become our master, when we subject ourselves to a position of fear, that's when the problems begin. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is going to always knock on your door. Just don't invite fear in for dinner. And for heaven's sake, don't invite fear to spend the night. When I was a youngster, my father let me watch the movie Wolfman with the rest of the family. Boy, did he live to regret that decision. I was only six years of age, and after the movie, I became convinced that Wolfman lived behind the couch in our living room, and that every night he wanted his midnight snack of six-year-old, red-headed, freckle-faced boy. And my fear proved problematic because in order for me to go from my bedroom to the kitchen, I had to go right through the hangout of Wolfman, something I was loath to do. And often in the middle of the night when I would awaken thirsty, wanting a glass of water, I would step into the living room, but then I would step back and I would go and awaken my father and I would tap him on the shoulder and he would look at me through one sleepy eye and he would ask a question like Jesus asked on the Sea of Galilee. Now, why are you afraid? And I would remind him of Wolfman. And he would stand up and he would sigh and I would reach out and I would take the back of his t-shirt and he would lead me through the hangout of Wolfman. And as I drank my glass of water, I would look up at him and think to myself, now what kind of man is this? When Jesus awoke from the storm, he asked the disciples, why are you afraid? And then he looked at the storm and he spoke to it. He spoke to the winds and he spoke to the waves. Scripture says he rebuked the storm and the storm became quiet. And the disciples looked at him and said, Now, what kind of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? What kind of man indeed? Perhaps the very kind of man who can help you face your storms, help you face your fears. Could it be that God views your fears the way my father viewed my wolf man angst? And could it be that the same one who stilled the storm on the Sea of Galilee is just waiting for you to come to him with your fears so he can do the same for you? What kind of man is this? What kind of God is this? This is the kind of God 
who can help you fear less tomorrow than you do today.